YouTube people, it is Surface Time again, and we've got one here. So we have the Surface Pro 9, pick myself up a Sapphire. I'm planning on doing uh, videos on this device like I normally do. Um, I'll be upgrading it to a 2 terabyte SSD, show you how that goes. What I wanted to do today is take a look at the history of where we've come from the original Surface until the Surface Pro 9 and what the performance looked like. So, uh, without uh, too much more fanfare, let's go ahead and look at... Okay, so we're going to take a look at single core performance, we're going to take a look at multi-core performance, and also the GPU performance of the entire Surface Pro series from the very beginning, starting with Surface Pro all the way up to Surface Pro 9. Uh, and at the very end, I'll kind of show you what I'm seeing for the Surface Pro 9 figures. There's some surprises. There's some predictions that I had in previous videos that I think are becoming validated. So if you watch my previous video, you know what I'm talking about. But Surface Pro uh, 0.9, Pro 2 went to 1.14, 1.17 on Surface Pro 3. Uh, Pro 4 went to 1.42, 1.8. Really casual regression throughout the years. Uh, sorry, not regression, uh, uplift throughout the years, uh, bringing us all the way to Service Pro 8 with 2.6, which is, you know, almost three times the performance of the original. Pretty good. Let's look at multi-core performance. And this, uh, we were stuck on two cores for a long time on the Surface Pro series. Uh, so Service Pro 1 and 2... You know, kind of tiny uplifts here. Surface Pro 4 had a pretty massive uplift uh, up to 3.46. Surface Pro 5 or the 2017 model went to 4.44. Surface Pro 6, we finally got quad core, and you see a massive uplift uh, that brought us to 6.69 on Cinebench R11.5 Multi. And you may be wondering why I use Cinebench R11.5 on for these, be, but the thing is, is Surface Pro. Original Surface Pro is so old, uh, it, I had to use benchmarks that were around back then and right now in order to bring this to you. So Surface Pro 7 Plus and then Pro 8 all the way up to 9.7. Uh, we'll look at now Pro 9 in just a minute here. Let's look at the graphical performance. Really interesting. Surface Pro uh, 626 on 3D Mark 11. Went to 991 with Pro 2. Surface Pro 3 kind of you know, hung out there. Service Pro 4 uh, really almost doubled performance here. Uh, and Service Pro 7 2017 actually had a really great score for the time because it had that Iris 540 graphics. Um, and just to note, these are all the i7 versions of the Surface Pro throughout the, the generation. So, um, yeah, it's, it's only looking at the i7 models just to show that maximum performance for the generation. And what you'll see here on Surface Pro 6 is we actually had a regression here. And that's because we went from Iris Pro graphics that I think, I don't know if I had the full 96 execution units, but it stepped back down to like, uh, basically there was like a 640 and a 620. And the Pro 6 was only available in that 620 model. So um, when the Pro 7 came out, uh, we got those XE graphics, J graphics, and had a massive uplift. We, we started getting some really good returns on GPU, starting with Surface Pro 7. Surface Pro 7 Plus uh, brought us uh, even higher, and that was Tiger Lake, I believe, that brought us to 5,900. And Surface Pro 8 as well, um, just uh, with the refinement in the chassis and uh, the ability the ability that it had to push higher watts on the Surface Pro 8 brought us up to 6825 for the 3 Mark 11 score. Now, da -da -da -da, let's look at the actual Surface Pro 9 performance. Boom! I'm starting with a multi-core. And this shouldn't necessarily be a surprise to any of you because we switched to Alder Lake and we literally went from 4 cores to 10 cores. So uh, this is a big uplift. Yeah, I mean, even you see the growth, it's a, it's a, it's a big uplift to 19.36. So really cool to see that. Um, 
But uh, let's take a look at single core and GPU. So single core, uh, pretty linear improvement. Single core bumped up just a little bit on Service Pro 9 to 3.01. And that's a, that's a pretty good, I mean, that's, that's on par with previous generation improvement. So it's good on single core, uh, nothing amazing, but uh, that multi-core really is pretty drastic. Let's look at 3D Mark 11. You can see that we're kind of running into this situation again, although not as bad. Uh, what we're seeing is uh, Alder Lake's iGPU just is not quite as strong as the previous generation. And I'm not sure what that is, but uh, definitely this was a 1.3 gigahertz and the new Surface Pro 9 was a 1.25 gigahertz. So slight regression in GPU performance, but uh, that's kind of what we, what I predicted and what, we're, what I'm seeing in the benchmarks now. So <clears throat> um, this is just a quick look at the performance on this. Um, as a teaser, I'll tell you what I've seen as far as thermal throttling. A really similar chassis to the Surface Pro 8, and things look really good uh, in terms of thermal uh, dissipation. Uh, in fact, I've seen this thing hit over 50 watts in uh, peak loads, and then it kind of hangs back and is able to maintain 25 watts with no fans, no tricks. Uh, 25 watts for a really long time. It eventually slows to maybe 22 or so, um, but that's is uh, really good uh, performance and heat dissipation for this size of device. So uh, I, like I said, just because this is a 15 watt chip, I knew Microsoft wouldn't tune it to 15 watts. Uh, this thing will go 50 plus and then hang out there for a long period of time at 25 and kind of drift down to maybe 22 or so. If you put a fan on it, it will go above 25, it'll go 28 or so. Uh, so, and that's sustained performance. So, um, there'll be more videos on this. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Just wanted to make something brief and let you guys uh, have a little preview from my perspective. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next one. Subscribe and we'll see you again.